very warm welcome to everyone who has joined us today for the Mood Shows episode on client counseling. It's my honor to have with me Abhishek Ranjan, who has recently done very well in a in an international client counseling competition. In today's episode, we'll get to know what these competitions are all about, how you can actually go and win such a competition. And at the end, we'll also take up questions which any of you might have from Abhishek. So welcome, Abhishek. Thank you so much for joining us. I would request you to just give a brief introduction of yourself, uh, details including where, which college you're from, which year you're studying in, and uh, which client counseling competition you participated in, and what was your position? Uh, thank you very much, Anav, for the very kind words that you used for me. Uh, I am very fortunate and I would like to thank Memo Pandits for giving me this opportunity uh, for actually providing a mechanism, synthesis mechanism, where uh, you introduce students to the practical aspects of law that we, uh, you know, get to know in terms of the competitions that we do, whether it's mooting, whether it's client counseling, whether it's, uh, you know, mediation, negotiation, other ADR competitions. So Memo Pandits is really doing a good job. So I would, you know, for the very beginning, I would like to really, uh, you know, tell you that the work that you're doing is very great. Uh, coming to me, I think, uh, I, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Abhishek and I'm a second year law student uh, in Army Institute of Law, Mohali. And the competition that I recently did was uh, the GD Goenka International Virtual uh, Client Counseling Competition. Uh, and uh, I think I could manage to win it. Although I am not something, you know, when, when we uh, talk about that, what I will bring into the table, why you should listen to me. Uh, you know, we always say that some people are quite experts in certain field. I would claim no, I make no such claims of, you know, having figured it out everything or give you deep insights. Although I think in a very, uh, you know, casual way, I would tell you that how you can approach these competitions if you ever wish to. So that's actually a very yeah that's actually a very important point but uh, you know I, I from my days i remember back in 2011 to 2016 we had a dearth of platforms uh, where you could actually go and check out details about a particular competition or let, you know uh, details about a specific moot court competition or a client competition was not even in our mind but right now, I'm glad that we are able to do this for the law students of India and abroad. And thank you so much for your kind words. Let's now begin with a couple of questions which will help our viewers understand what client uh, counseling competitions are. And honestly, uh, I am also not that aware of the exact functioning, the procedure. So uh, Abhishek, if you could just help everybody grasp the basics of what a client counseling competition are that would be very beneficial yes the other day i was you know in one of the events in my college were happening and i uh, heard one of my seniors say and i think that is the best way to describe what a client counseling session is it's more like going on a date where you really need to listen to the other person analyze and then you know try to give your best you know whenever we go on dates how is it like we put our best foot forward to impress the date so the client client counseling is just like that you need to really impress your clients whoever come to you you need to really listen to what the person is and what the problem that person is facing and i think uh, you need to provide them with the best legal remedies speaking of how law whenever we talk about law schools generally this adr culture is relatively new uh, i i don't think that uh, 20 years back law school have been prevalent since you know time immemorial however i don't think 20 years back there was this adr culture was so into the picture but now recently this Mooting was the only competition that we could hear of. But now lately, I see that ADR is also one of the things which is, you know, taken a toll in, um, in law schools. It is something that's very, very, very prevalent. So it is also, the client counseling is also one of the major mechanisms of ADR because we see how the world is shrinking um, in terms of, you know, whatever is happening. Now, this facility to do this in a Instead of relative uh, competitions, I don't know, maybe this mooting and lit 
I guess things are becoming like this only. Client counseling is more of an area or mechanism, and um, it really helps you to you know understand the client better and a non-legal solution provide them a non-legal, uh, less complex uh, solution to them. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. Uh, if if I understand correctly, would you agree if I say that client counseling competitions are more informal than any normal moot court competition or any other co-curricular activity which is strictly formal? Um, and why I say this is because, as you said, uh, it's about impressing your client. It's about making an impact on the client, and that could involve formal and informal tactics. So, would you agree? Not completely, but of course, in a comparative sense, I would definitely agree. It is not as uh, formal as a mood code competition. However, it is very, very formal. You, you cannot use unparliamentary language. Of course, if you, know, if you ask me to compare mood and a client counseling, how I could, um, how I can compare it is like when mood is more like going, uh, I mean, um, you know, mood is more like uh, going to somebody's place mm -hmm. as a guest. Mm -hmm. And when you go to somebody's place, what you try to do is, you know, you can, you try to impress them by telling you how much, you know, showing them your etiquette, showing your, the demeanor. However, in a client counseling, it's more like inviting people over to your place mm -hmm. and you become the hosts. And when mm -hmm. you are, what you expect, you don't need to be very, you know, use the exact language, but make them feel at home, make them feel comfortable. Whereas in a mood court, when there are judges, very renowned judges, you bring your law to the table. You tell them how important law is. What all do you know in terms of law? However, in client counseling, the person who's coming to your bench is somebody who can be called a law illiterate, right? Mm -hmm. So without actually explicitly stating the laws, you need to make them very, very comfortable. You need to make them understand about law. And, uh, you know, that's how it is. Got it. Got it. Basically, you're trying to help out someone who doesn't have a lot of knowledge about law, uh, which which is not the case in, in, any, in any moot court competition. Uh, the judges would be well versed with the laws uh, relevant to the particular fact situation, but clients are very different, and that's and I'm glad that you bring this point up because even when you leave law school, when all all of the students who are attending right now, uh, you know, when you leave law school, when you face actual clients, the biggest factor which is going to come in your way is the kind of uh, communication which you have with the client cannot be so. Uh, you know, uh, so law specific as, as Abhishek mentioned, like it can't, it can't be very heavily reliant on laws, on case laws, on statutes. You have to make them understand like just another person who's not a lawyer, right? And that's the, that's the beauty about any client counseling competition. It hones your capability of handling clients, right? Uh, Abhishek, uh, in one sentence, if, if I were, if I were to ask you to answer, answer this, what is the main benefit of participating in a client counseling competition? What is the best benefit? What's the best benefit of participating into? I think you get to know the know-hows of how you're going to survive in the industry. Um, Anav, if I have to tell you, because, you know, even if you, as you said, I mean, very, very great insight from your end, when you tell us, even in the real realm of world, how, you know, real realm of things, how things work, you don't get cases even if you want to, you know, if you have to become a legal practitioner, you don't get cases from the heaven. You need to go out there. You need to impress people, you know, make them trust in you that they give you the cases, even if you want to become a legal practitioner. Mm. So once you get the know-how of that, even in the real realm of things, you are better equipped to get cases, better equipped to at least attract the clients, better equipped to at least attract people to place bets on you to even, become, you know, so that they can give you the cases so you can, uh, you know, even represent them in future uh, mm -hmm. hearings. So I think this is the basic importance. Yeah, I, think, I think that was, that's definitely enough to convince any student why they should participate in a client counseling competition. Now let's move one step ahead. Let's say a student is participating in a client counseling competition and that student has some kind of idea on how to proceed, how to uh, you know, take care of the things which are required in the rules and everything. But what makes you a winner? What, and if I, you know, if I were to ask you in this form, what would be the top two to three things which are most important 
which helped you win the actual competition which you participated in again going back to the reference that i made uh, in the beginning of the session what makes you you know win the date if you can understand the date if you can listen to what the problem is so i think more than what happens generally in the sessions that i could do and in whatever mentoring that i've done so far what i feel that students or people lack during client counseling session is not hearing in a fit to bring out the best to the table to give the best solution they somehow do not uh, you know reckon the problems that the counselor the client is facing so it's very important to listen to the problems to extract the real facts of the case and give them the right solution then instead of hurrying to the solution although yes i agree that client counseling competitions in general are quite time restrictive time constraints are there however it's always good to listen maybe you can you know the remedies can be suggested in the last 4 minutes of the session however to listen and understand the problem i think takes the key for me makes you a winner got it got it thank you so much that 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 was brilliant i think uh because i do want to stress again on one very important thing be it whatever activity you know be it moot court competitions be it client counseling competitions the meaning or the understanding aspect of any kind of you know um, any kind of activity which you are doing is very important and by that i mean if you understand the mood problem or you understand the nature of the case of your client only then can you proceed from the you know proceed from being just a participant to an actual winner that that's what makes you shine out if you understand what the real case is that and that's a that's a skill you you cannot develop in a day's time it's something which you inculcate over a period of time by repeated practice so so yeah just just keep in mind for all the students just keep in mind what abhishek just mentioned try to focus more on what the relevant facts of the case are and try to gain meaning out of that okay uh, so yeah and for for the next question abhishek i want you to be very you know honest very candid very unbiased so that the students actually benefit from this um how well organized how uh, did you find the gd goenka moot uh, sorry gd goenka client counseling competition give your honest views on how you felt about it right i feel uh, if i talk about specifically that competition i really think that the competition was well organized the participants the team qualities were really uh, impeccable if i can say because it was an international competitions we also had teams from nepal but in other country of neighboring countries so i think the level and the organization really uh, made good attempts and also you know we all know the gd goenka competition in itself is becomes a little top notch because of the you know the reward that they give you after the uh, competition because it's quite a high budget thing however of course the we lack on the experience we lack on the because you know you must be knowing that law is all about making connections making getting to know people that is a little restrictive when everything has become online however the best you could get i think uh, the competition did provide me with ample opportunities the ample exposure that is necessary however again because of the online mode things become a little restrictive Uh, and can you tell me you know this is again this goes for the students who actually are going to participate uh, in the coming few months can you tell me a couple of other good names of other client counseling competitions which are almost at par or a, a little above or a little below uh, gd goenka uh, sorry client counseling competition for this semester i'm not quite sure however there was no no reason. not 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 just for this semester i i meant for uh, you know for anyone so nliu link is a good competition which i think you should definitely look forward to it 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 happened re- Uh, you know recently it is a good competition all client counseling competitions nalsa does a good uh, client counseling competition you should definitely look forward to that ups is again a good client okay. counseling competition which you could you know you can definitely partake into mm-hmm. so i would suggest got these got it and uh, can you tell me a bit about uh, the quality of judging which you faced here and the quality of clients which you had right so you know the quality of clients uh, first coming to that it really depends uh, what kind of client you have 
the entire case changes uh, once you get to know the quality of a client so suppose if the client is quite chatty so mm-hmm. even that's a problem because then you need to understand what all points are important and what where all the client is just trying to deceive you with unnecessary facts so that's a problem there were chatty clients so no, you know in these competitions what happens is with every uh, successive rounds the quality of clients keep on changing so mm. for me to tackle the easiest clients will be you know in initial round in preliminary rounds you get normal clients who are not very chatty uh, who are uh, you know who are very uh, normal will tell you the facts you know in a platter so in initial rounds you do and these initial rounds basically test your knowledge of law how you know how comfortable you are with the client how comfortable you can make him but as the rounds go keeps on increasing you start getting chatty clients you start getting rude clients so there was a mix of clients even in the competition okay. as far as judges goes i think there were great judges there were certain uh, you know the judges from uh, supreme court of delhi there was high court judges as well in the final rounds we also had uh, i'm i'm really sorry i'm forgetting the name but uh, khetan and company there was uh, the C, the i mean one of the legal attorneys of the you know khetan had also uh, visited the final court of course and uh, you know now now that we're talking a lot about rounds and the different kinds of uh, clients you face in different rounds uh, for the benefit of any student who doesn't have a clue about any client counseling competition uh, can you in in brief actually can you tell me the stages involved if today i know nothing about client co- counseling competition and i let's say i see a client counseling competition coming up on memo pandits uh, knowledge center i see that there's act there's an actual competition happening right so what what is the stage wise procedure what happens first till the end okay i mean what happens in a session of client counseling no no, no. i'm uh, no uh, what i'm asking is basically is there a problem which is released first or is there uh, everything so uh, what happens first then then we go into registration then we actually hold the rounds then what are the rounds like so so just like a brief idea of how objectively this competition looks like right so it is as as i've already told you it's very different from a moot court competition where the problem is released first then you get the ample opportunity to you know assess the proposition and then decide whether you will be interested in this competition whether it's a criminal nothing of that sort happens in a client counseling competition if you're interested as you just said that if there is a notification of a certain competition you need there will be certain areas of law based on which the competition is going to be about for example if i release a notification uh, that this you know next week in there is this competition and the areas of law will be asked will be torts criminal um, ipr intellectual property is i don't know client counseling favorite because most of the competitions okay. have ipr in it so ipr okay. contract law these subheads and the you know uh, competition notification it is released suppose that nothing apart from this nothing else is given to you once you registered for this competition you pay the fees if there is any at all and then what happens you register yourself in the competition there is a introduction round i'm talking about the virtual session these days because most mm-hmm. probably that is going to happen then there is a you know preliminary uh, oration of sorts where you get to know who what all teams are participating into it there is no memo submission there is nothing of that sort like it happens in a, a moot court competition mm-hmm. yeah simply you get into the competition then based on draw of lots you are you know there is no you don't have to go against any other team there is just a client that comes to you and then just before the competition 30 minutes or sometimes the time gap can be can be different for different competitions you a pr- proposition is released to you wherein it, it is said that okay client is very minute maybe four or five lines that client is facing uh, marital issues and there is a robbery also happened something something is there and that's okay. all that's all okay. that you get to know and then okay. it's your job to assess the client to extract the facts from the client to understand uh, you know what exactly is the client's problem and bas- that's why i tell you that why understanding and listening is something that's very important in a client counseling competition and once you extract the facts once you make the client comfortable you need to again assess the nature of the client he can be very chatty he can be very you know disturbed mm. so uh, you need to do all of that after that the clients leaves depending 
upon the consultation period, which can be 15 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, depending upon the rounds and depending upon uh, the quality and the nature of the competition. Post that, there is post consultation period where you need to consult. There are two councils generally. Uh, you need to consult among yourselves and then give the best legal remedy. And throughout or during all this, there are certain judges who are observing you and they can even question you in the post consultation rounds. And that's how the rounds get over. And then if your performance is good, you uh, move on into successive rounds and eventually the finals. I, 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 I do have, yeah, I do have a couple of questions lined up, but I have a follow up question from what you just explained. Uh, what was the registration fee for for the competition which in, in which you participated? Uh, I think it was 1500, not quite sure. Okay. And is the registration fee around that amount for uh, almost like majority of the competitions? I think so. Yes, it is hmm. somewhere around that only. Oh. Uh, okay. Yes. So, I, I, you know, I just wanted to bring this point up because a lot of students, uh, what they have to factor in is the budget of, uh, you know, any kind of a budget budget for participating in any kind of competition. And apart from the registration fee, do you think that is there any other kind of expense which the participant needs to uh, do to participate? Yes, especially See, if, if, so if, there is, yeah, if it's a virtual yeah, so round. The yeah, for the budget, you know, it really depends upon the rounds, I mean, and the college that is conducting. For example, as I've already told you, GD Goenka is one of the really high budgeted uh, client counseling competitions because it is it also has a great reward to it it's quite a lucrative deal there so you win also but you know again the registration charges sometimes are quite higher however apart from that there is no memo submission that you need to do you do not need any access to any um, great portal the only thing that you need is uh, just the requisite amount of knowledge the law knowledge of law and the compassion and the composure to make the client feel comfortable and i think that's about it got it got it got it all right uh, now i have another question for you we earlier you were talking about uh, okay so for for anyone who's messaging questions uh, for abhishek uh, i would just request you to wait till the end of our question and answer round we will definitely have a public round where you can ask questions so my question to you abhishek is that you mentioned that you faced some clients who were rude some clients who were good right so of course, um, a good client, a sweet client is um, is all you want. But life is not so easy. Life is not so sweet. So uh, if you if you face a rude client, if the students actually face a client which is uh, intimidating or non-cooperative, what should their strategy be, and what was your strategy? Right. Uh, so another aspect of client counseling competition is that when the clients are being marked, uh, the Councils are being marked, the clients are also marked. So mm. their job is to make your life hell. Their job is to conceal the facts as much as they can. Their job is to deviate you from facts. So this is also one thing that happens in a client counseling competition, as you rightly pointed out, the clients can be really annoying, can be really disrespectful at times. And it's all about that. I mean, it's all about checking how composed you are, checking how, uh, you know, how you can tackle such clients. And as this rounds goes on increasing, this is a, you know, main thing that's practiced in a client counseling competition. What you can do is to, as I've already told you, Consider client counseling like a date. Consider client counseling like, you know, you are the host and people have come, to, you know, there are certain guests who have come to you. What will you do if they are rude? You can't do much about it. The only thing that you can do is win them over by showing the correct amount of, you know, feeling sympathetic with them. Sometimes these clients are very disturbed. Mm. Right. Uh, we also had Ria Chakraborty as our client, Kangna Ranaut as my client in our mm. rounds. I mean, the names were changed, but they had come with this intention. So what we had to do is to be as respectful as they can. Now, if you can, one trick that I'm giving you here is if you can identify the profession of this client. For example, as I've told you that, you know, I got Kangna Ranaut as my client in one of the rounds. I tried using, uh, you know, I, I told her that, ma'am, please relax. We understand how great a personality you are with, you know, um, with um, great, great power comes great responsibility. And being from the movies, 
the person instantly recognized this dialogue is from spider man so she related with me on that so you know these are the tips and tricks if if a client is from a certain pr profession you can win them over by using the tricks of that particular profession you just need to show them that you share similar interest you are you know in the same boat you identify with their problems and if you are successful in doing that even the rudest of clients go happy in the end and these clients are uh, so so yeah i have a follow up question the majority of the clients are they law students uh, or what are who what is their background exactly um, unfortunately i have never been a client in uh, a client counseling competition so i'm not quite aware as to what okay. uh, the law however in um, you know after the rounds i have made couple of friends you know you get to talk with mm -hmm. the clients mm -hmm. after the session and from whatever i've known these these are generally from the college that you know uh, who is organizing mm -hmm. the Correct. Client correct, counseling correct. competition. So they are generally correct. law students. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. And even if they're not law students, I don't think uh, that should uh, be you know bothering to either the person who's uh, who's against them or yeah. So I think it's 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 uh, irrelevant. But let's let's just let the students know a little about the inside knowledge. All right. Uh, my next question to you is, and this is very, very important for first year students. Uh, the question is, your opponents, what year of study were they mm -hmm. in? If you, if you, if you actually know about this, then you can answer this because I understand that sometimes we are not able to chat enough with your, uh, with the opponents uh, to find out what year of law they're in. So can you tell me approximately what, 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 what were your uh, analysis? There were fifth years, um, and I will frankly tell you, there were fifth years, there were fourth years. I think they were from all years, I guess. And as I've already told you, this was an international competition. So, mm. I mean, there were people even from higher studies as well, I'm sure. Mm. And you're a fourth year student, if I'm not wrong. I'm a second year, second year student. You're a second year student. Okay. And how did it feel to, to face fourth year, fifth year students? Uh, when you're in your second year, when you've just almost just started out um, your journey. Right. Uh, I'm in uh, the lucky, I, I just got lucky because in this, you don't get to face them per se. You just mm -hmm. face the client. And however they are doing in their rounds is a totally different thing. And as I've, yeah. told, I've already told you, this branch of, uh, you know, competition does not really concern you about your knowledge of law. Mm. It does test your knowledge of law eventually, but it's more about how much can you extract facts. So maybe if, if, if you are very experienced and you go out there with a set perspective, okay, if there is a problem in the marriage, I am going to apply the family law or the Hindu marriage act in this particular problem for this client. Mm. However, the main reason is dowry death. Do you understand? So yeah. if you are, you know, experienced, you just try to bring the best to the table. As I've already told you time and again, I'm reiterating the same fact. It's very important to understand the nature of the problem that the client is facing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is something that is very important. here. Yes. Uh, before we move on to the next question, we have about two to three questions left, but Ananya, can you just circulate the attendance form? Whoever is present right now will be marked uh, attended and the rest of the students who join after this question, I'm, uh, I'm really sorry, <laughs> we, we will not be able to give you attendance. But yeah, Ananya, can you just circulate the form on the chat box? Sure, sir. yeah. Yeah, all right. Me, uh, yeah, and everybody is just supposed to fill that form so that you are marked attended and you get the certificate, uh, which you rightly deserve. Anyway, my next question is, uh, yeah, I need a very yes or no objective answer to this actually. Would you suggest a first year student to try cl a client counseling competition? I would definitely suggest a first year to try a client counseling, try a mood court competition, try mm -hmm. everything. I mean, because mm -hmm. it's, there is no baggage and barrier. There is no pressures at all in the first year to begin with. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's more about exploring, getting to know your field of expertise, getting to realize that, you know, in which branch of law you will be most comfortable mm -hmm. in. Like if you are, if somebody like me who's interested in a client counseling competition, it's more likely that I'll be able to deal in a corporate sector. 
having a moot court competition mm. and if you have figured it out all in the very first year of your study i think you're just mm. going to do great you know eventually when you go out there and uh, mm. explore what all you definitely like so for a first year i would want them to do anything and everything that comes mm. their way and figure out um, you know the best thing got for it. them got it so so for for whoever is listening right now uh, if you're a first year student if you're confused uh whether you should participate in a client counseling competition or not uh the answer right from the horse's mouth is that it's a strong yes you should definitely participate it's not going going to be so much pressurizing because not a lot of law knowledge is required so please make use of this opportunity because as you uh, you know as you go into your later years of law school a lot of other things will also need your time so when you have the time please make sure that you utilize it judiciously okay my next question is can you tell me a bit about the post consultation session which you were talking about how was it how did you take care of the questions and anything which you want to share about it right so since the very beginning i've been telling you that consider client counseling session as you know inviting people over to your place right mm-hmm. what happens once they leave you can discuss about the guest at length mm-hmm. when the guest is present of course you your entire time will go into consoling the guest mm-hmm. telling them you know understanding their problem but once that person leaves you can you know be in your uh, pajamas and discuss about the guest here you need yeah. to bring the best yeah. of your law to the table because here just the judges are going to observe you how you need to tell the you know even the uh, client's worst case scenario if there is a crime that the client has committed you need to accept that you need to acknowledge that you need to understand that you know this is something that go can go against your case when mm-hmm. there are just two counsels left you can discuss what all sections you can discuss what all case laws you know there is a fact that generally people say ki it's very different from a moot but here bring the best in post consultation period judges just want to know how much do you understand the law once you have figured out what the problem actual problem is you mm-hmm. can talk about what all acts you're going to apply what is going to be the protocol whether are you going to file for a anticipatory bail depending upon the case whatever it may be uh, you know are you going to apply for certain other b- b- bail uh, procedure is there you know are you going to go to the consumer courts what is going to be the line of protocol that you're going to follow what do you think is going to go against your client what do you think are the similar case laws that you have seen before i think all this comes into the play once the client goes over and you actually become a lawyer instead of a host which you were Uh, prior to the consultation got it i hope i made myself clear yeah absolutely this is informative even for me because uh, i have personally never participated in a client counseling competition but everything about it looks very very interesting uh, sounds very intriguing okay uh, i think that's it uh, from my side i'm going to take a couple of questions from the participants they've messaged uh, some direct questions to me if any of the remaining participants if you have any questions please write it in the chat box uh, we will also Before be talking that, about I would, yeah i would like to thank everybody who's attending the session it's a sunday i totally understand there are better things to do you can just go you know netflix around but attending the session getting something informative and uh, you know getting to know some i'm more than happy and glad that you chose to attend the session and i'll be more than happy to answer the questions please tell me yes okay so first the first question is ha huh, the problems about the client counseling competition basically the problem statement or uh, the is the fact and issue which is involved is it about one law or multiple laws and what about the situation where you do not know the solution to the client's problem so basically there are two questions here the first question is are multiple laws involved uh, although i think earlier you said that the, it's not so law centric but uh, just to you know get get an idea of uh, uh, about this question from you the question is are there multiple laws involved or would there be just one law or one aspect of law Uh, may I know who has asked this question? Uh, Lakhan Gupta. Thank you, Lakhan, for the question. Uh, uh, yes, I think um, enough. It is law centric. However, when a client comes to you, you definitely 
can't you know you need to consider him somebody who doesn't know much about law otherwise why will he would have come to you in the first place yeah. so then you don't have to you know use legal languages you legal language you know answer the, the client by you know saying legal maxims and all you don't have to do that however you definitely need to understand the main core of the problem so if a com- person comes to me saying that you know he's facing problems in the divorce and you know because there are certain property issues uh, there is certain um, fraudery that the wife has done and that's why he, so all this is fine however what does the client expect from me if the client expects a divorce i won't consider the wife committing fraudery as something that i as a counsel will deal right my entire aspect will be about divorce so yes uh, lakhan there can be multiple problems in the statement that you get however you need to understand what your client expects from you and deliver the same problem to him so they can be sometimes to confuse you multiple uh, problem but uh, you can do this i'm hmm. so sorry anand no 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 uh, the other part of his question is basically what about the situation where you do not know the solution to your client's problem and you know just to add to that did you face any situation where you were a little unsure of what the solution should be and how did you tackle that right of course there were i think not just one i think in all the rounds i you know in the very beginning in the beginning you are a little unsure because the try client tries to uh, you know deviate you tries to but then that's that's what that's where in you know you need to use your expertise that's where your job is actually to you know make them uh, come in line um, in the right alignment of what problem they are actually facing and understand the problem better and that you can do by you know digging in facts by the fact extraction is very very important if there are certain things that the client is concealing even after the end of the session that's just going to be very very futile therefore you need to make the client very comfortable so that he can explicitly share with you there are certain other protocols that i would definitely want to tell people who haven't done this at all about vakalat nama uh, you need to sign sign the vakalat nama vakalat nama is a document which actually makes you uh, you know which makes you the person if the client agrees to sign the vakalat nama he is actually basically giving you the case so throughout the course of your argument you need to convince the client to sign the vakalat nama you need to focus on fact extraction there's also a no confidentiality laws that you should definitely make them uh, sign so because they are always apprehensive about the fact that whether or not their data will be leaked outside the consultation mm-hmm. period so if mm-hmm. you do all of this the client becomes quite sure to reveal everything to not conceal anything at all and once you do that you definitely when when the picture is quite lucid in front of you you can analyze which problem um, mm-hmm. you know you need to tackle first and so they basically everything the entire question as to how to tackle intimidating client or how to tackle uh, you know different problems in a particular statement is uh, focusing more on the fact fact ex- extraction and making the f- client feel comfortable if you do Got that it. i think everything will become a little lucid clear to you got it okay next question is from anjali she is asking what do you do if you can't find the hidden information in time how do you salvage the situation hi anjali yes this is a definitely a very important problem that you face in a, a client counseling problem that you the time restraints are there now how to manage this is by the division of roles right um, unfortunately i'm doing this session alone um, and not with my partner but let me tell you that once you go into a client counseling session there are two people who go into this and then it becomes very important to divide your roles aptly to uh, you know if one person is making the client comfortable the other person can you know indulge into facts extraction and once the duty is divided properly once the division of role is very clear you somehow you know eventually and this comes with a lot of practice so before directly venturing into a competition in your college you can definitely ask people to take mock sessions with you uh, you know memo pandit is a platform that provides you with plethora of information and i'm sure by this uh, by this session today they have given you an great amount of uh, exposure to client counseling also so you can reach out to them you can reach out to me on linkedin i'm always there to help you if you do mock sessions nothing like it yeah abhishek in the meantime can you just uh, send uh, your linkedin profile link on the chat box so if, so if there's anyone who wants to uh, you know get in touch with you for any kind of help uh, they can do that um 
Most in the time. meantime, I'm just going to see what the next question is. Okay, so the next question is quite general, but I think it's a it's an apt question for a lot of students. Uh, the question is from Deeksha, and she's asking, how are client counseling competitions different from arbitration competition? Very different. Uh, arbitration competition is, you know, basically it's again one of the other branches of ADR. However, in arbitration, basically, I think she wants to ask about mediation and negotiation. Right. Uh, there things are quite different because arbitration is definitely different from mediation. However, the format is a little same. Why? Because there you need to discuss. There is a competition among two people, two parties. So th that is there. However, here you don't compete with your client. You provide them with the best solution in negotiation, in arbitration, you come out, you try to come at a very, uh, you know, uh, reasonable uh, sort of a, you know, uh, basic motive is to find a right conclusion, make a contract, you know, make uh, alliances with the parties in arbitration to make a particular deal um, work out. However, in, in this, you don't compete with your client. You just provide them with the best uh, legal remedy that there is. Got it. Uh, Ananya has also posted Abhishek's LinkedIn profile um, as a message on the chat box. So if there's anyone who wants some general advice on plans and strategies. Um, I'm very happy to see that Abhishek is, is volunteering to do that. Of course, while doing so, please make sure that you don't bother him for uh, the bother him for questions which um, which you can easily research on the internet or just Google. But otherwise, um, I'm very happy to see that you are uh, you know willing to volunteer and help other law students. So with that, I think uh, we can, you know, uh, unless anybody else has any questions, does anybody else have any kind of questions related to the session? Uh, if you do, please uh, use the chat box. In the meantime, I'm just going to uh, throw in a, a couple of links for you, for all of you. Uh, just a second. One question from uh, Shreya Gautam. Which team oh. inti Im intimidated you the most? Oh, How yeah. did you tackle with this situation? Hmm. Again, uh, Shreya, we don't compete here with the teams. It's more about the clients. You don't compete with the clients either. Uh, however, the, basically the judges judge you based on how well uh, you can you know, provide the best remedy to your client. And if you are able to do that, I think uh, nothing like it. There is no team that you deal with. And I think that's a relaxing part. Otherwise, I'm sure that there were a lot of intimidating teams. However, I never got to face them directly. Yeah. Thank you, Shreya, okay. for the question. Okay. So, um, two very, very important things for all of you. Uh, we have another webinar coming up on the 24th, I think. Uh, Ananya is just going to send you a link of the upcoming webinar. It's also, uh, an, it's an, it's another episode of the mood show, which is an initiative by memo pundits. Um, Abhishek, I request you personally to please join that webinar as well. It's going let, let's build a community where we can all help each other out, uh, where we can share knowledge so that, uh, you know, every student benefits and as a country, we, we grow and we, you know, improve our standards of legal education. Let's aim for that. Right, so uh, Ananya has sent the link for the upcoming webinar. And also if anybody would like to browse through the various online courses, which Memo Pandits has on its platform, Ananya has also sent a link for that. Please go ahead and have a look. Uh, you might see a course which you actually need. In fact, uh, for all 27 people who, who, are, who have joined us uh, right now, We've recently joined, uh, uh, sorry, we've recently launched a very, very fantastic course on citation methods where we're teaching Blue Book 21st, 20, uh, 20th edition, as well as Oscola and everything which is related to citation. So it will be handy for not just for your mood code competitions or your research papers, but also for any kind of, uh, you know, legal draft related activity, which you might do in law school in an LLM or even after college, because I can vouch for it that you need to uh, know how to cite things properly when you start working in a law firm or and, uh, with an advocate or any, any sector for that matter. So please go ahead and have a look at our new citation methods course. It might change your life. It might uh, give you a very, give, uh, very good boost in your skills. 
and it's priced very very affordably right now i think it's priced at 600 rupees so please go ahead and uh, you know um, make uh, make use of this opportunity and the the second important thing is that uh regarding the certificates we have a set procedure uh, which if you follow to the t then you are definitely eligible for a certificate um i'm sure most of you would be uh, would would be knowing what the terms and conditions of receiving the certificates are so if anybody has any questions you can reach out to ananya she's dropped her number also you can either message her whatsapp her or you can also write to us on uh, our on email uh, our email id is present on the website all right so with that being said um, abhishek this session was amazing i am i'm just hoping that uh, it reaches out to a lot of students who are interested in client counseling competitions because this will be very helpful for every such student so thank you so much for joining us it was lovely to have you and we also want to have you for more upcoming episodes for more upcoming webinars so thank you so much and uh, yeah we hope to have you again thank you so much i once again i would like to thank everybody who has made their time um thank you anjali and uh, for the <laughs> comments and thank you anand for giving me this opportunity to you know Uh, to you know give away whatever little i know about the profession i'm sure that uh, with time i can be able to contribute more uh, in whatever capacity that i can and thank you so much memo pandits is doing an amazing job thanks a lot